Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclone to Oz and here is your detailed weather forecast update for Saturday the 26th of July 2025. A big time storm over southeastern Australia is causing all sorts of severe weather problems for South Australia, Victoria, New South Wales, Queensland, the Australian Capital Territory and Tasmania with another storm expected behind it. Another significant weather system expected across the southwest of WA and showers and rainfall will continue across our tropics unseasonably for this time of the year. All the details on these storms plus more coming up in today's weather forecast update and if you are brand new to the channel please do consider subscribing but let's get stuck straight into things for your Saturday morning over with the elephant in the room or the elephant over the top of the nation by the looks of things is the system in the southeast corner of South Australia this morning. This is an absolutely massive low pressure system and I illustrate this the best by really zooming out to encompass all of Australia on the satellite imagery here. Have a look at how large this weather system is with the low pressure system here situated over the southeast of South Australia cloud dominating the scene over in Tasmania and well to the south of Tasmania as well. The backside of this system here extending over towards Western Australia in fact right over towards Esperance is the kind of final area that's being influenced by this weather system in a significant capacity with rainfall and cloud activity streaming into the northern reaches of Queensland, parts of the Northern Territory and dragging in rainfall as far north as Darwin. This system here is impacting probably about 50 or 60 percent of Australia's land area in terms of uh, in, in terms of just general impacts from this weather system here. It is absolutely huge and as I mentioned a couple of days ago 15 million people will end up being impacted by this weather system. It definitely is more of a show pony than it is a massive severe weather system. It, it does have some significant severe weather impacts, especially along the southern and the western side of this storm here. It definitely is quite a strong one, but like I said, more of a show pony. The impacts for New South Wales, Victoria, Queensland and Tasmania have been a lot more mild over the last couple of days. Uh, that was expected to happen. The forecast has been pretty much accurate on this system for the most part. But yeah, the conditions that this system uh, definitely haven't matched the storm size. It's been a lot weaker in terms of severe weather impacts than it has been in terms of just how it looks from uh, the satellite imagery, if that makes sense. This system here is packing a lot uh, less punch than it is in terms of what it looks like, that's for sure. Still though, a very strong system. And as you can see on wind observations across the southwest and uh, the southeastern parts of Australia, it definitely is quite blustery here and there. On the western side of the storm system, strong wind stream in around the Sejuna and the Streaky Bay area through the Air Peninsula on South Australia's uh, western coast. Uh, the rainfall there has since dropped off from yesterday, but we are still looking at a few showers coming through throughout the remainder of this morning. Rainfall moving into New South Wales and Victoria as well after some thunderstorms were dragged in from the north last night. Some good thunderstorms actually over in Queensland. We had plenty of lightning, damaging winds, and reports of hailstones here and there into the southwest corners of the state. However, they have been unverified as of right now. Uh, the thunderstorm threat has more or less dissipated. Strong winds also extending across the Alpine areas through New South Wales and Victoria as well. It doesn't look like any of the southern imagery is going to load in for us this morning, but it definitely is uh, starting to unfold into some blizzard conditions across parts of the higher elevations through New South Wales and Victoria. 61 kilometres an hour out of the north at Mount Buller, and that's expected to increase, and 72 kilometres an hour out of the north at Threadbo, again, expected to increase over the next couple of hours. Strong winds also streaming down the New South Wales coast, and we have a strong offshore flow there this morning, and a few showers that have moved through Sydney in the last couple of hours, now streaming further out to sea, and you can see the rainfall now beginning to be dragged down through the northeast of New South Wales. I'll get into southeast corner of Queensland later on this afternoon. I'll get to that in a later part of this forecast update. Rainfall is building for the east coast of Tasmania as well. And as you can see, winds at Eddystone Point, 56 kilometres an hour out of the northeast. Winds are expected to continue to increase there. And at Friendly Beaches, just outside of Coles Bay, 40 kilometres an hour out of the northeast. Again, these uh, easterly winds or these northeasterly winds accompanied by this moderate rainfall streaming through will increase throughout the remainder of this morning. Uh, winds are a little bit calmer through Victoria and South Australia. That's because this low pressure system is pretty much situated right over the top of them. And in the center of the low pressure system, the same deal as you get in a tropical cyclone, making this an extra tropical cyclone, you have that calm air, basically an iron. You can see wind observations here into the southeast corner of South Australia. Very, very calm indeed. Only a couple of kilometers an hour out of certain different directions. And it's also very, very cold in the center of this storm here uh, because it is obviously a cold core system being an extra tropical cyclone. Winds are uh, uh, very calm and the temperature observations that we're seeing across the southeast of South Australia are very cold indeed. Robe 8 degrees uh, this morning or into the uh, late morning into the early afternoon and multiple temperature observations through New South Wales as well. Very, very cold again this morning. Still some good showers moving through South Australia as mentioned and some more rainfall is expected through there. Again for Queensland in the northeast of New South Wales where the weather is impacted a little bit more by a trough line as opposed to the initial cold front moving through. I'll get to that in a later part of this forecast update. 
The system here is on its way out. We are expecting a general weakening trend to continue throughout the remainder of today, especially as it continues to head towards the southeast this morning and it has more land interaction. The system will begin to fall apart by this afternoon. Showers and rainfall will continue through New South Wales and Victoria, but we're expecting a general weakening trend and a general easing trend of these showers and thunderstorms throughout the remainder of this morning and into early this afternoon. And in fact, showers are going to contract coastal locations into the southeast corner of South Australia. Anywhere basically towards the east of Sejuna will have that chance of showers later tonight through South Australia. And showers and rainfall will also contract into the southeastern corner of New South Wales as well and along the foothills on the western side of the Great Dividing Range. Showers will also extend into parts of Victoria as well along the New South Wales-Victoria border and then again onto the western side of the Great Dividing Range foothills. Ra showers and rainfall will also continue for the southwest coast of Victoria as well and showers and rainfall expected to build through early tomorrow morning and into early tomorrow afternoon through parts of Tasmania. There will be a resurgence of showers and rainfall through the western half of Victoria through tomorrow afternoon and evening as this system does get itself over uh, the Bass Strait once again, it will funnel in some more moisture in towards Victoria and again behaving like we would see in a powerful low pressure system we're expecting a bit more moisture to be moving through there and that's going to lead to those increasing shower activities and the chance of some thunderstorms and snow for the higher elevations through tomorrow morning and into early uh, into late tomorrow afternoon. Again, rainfall is expected to ease by late uh, tomorrow evening and again this low pressure system falling apart through Monday morning as it heads further out into the Tasman Sea and we're expecting the significant severe weather conditions to be long gone by Monday morning and even the showers and the rainfall associated with this weather system here beginning to ease off through Monday. We're still expecting some cold temperatures through Sunday and Monday as well, so it's definitely going to feel like we're in, under the influence of a strong low pressure system across the southeast of the nation, but significant severe weather impacts and heavy showers and whatnot, they should be long gone after about Sunday night into early Monday morning. Rainfall accumulations, we're probably about 40 to 50% of the way through for rainfall in terms of what we're expecting across coastal locations, but in terms of the more inland locations, most of the rainfall that will fall from this weather system has already fallen. We're still looking at a further 10 to 15 millimetres across parts of New South Wales and Victoria. That will increase to up to about 40 millimetres on top of what has already fallen for coastal locations. Same deal with South Australia as well. A couple more good drops expected here and there into the more agricultural areas away from the coastline, and then again, a further 10 to 25 millimetres expected for coastal locations. The east coast of Tasmania looking at some healthy rainfall accumulations as well throughout the remainder of this morning. It's going to be the southeast coast around uh, Port Arthur and then down through Mount Syker Island and into the, some of the areas, some of the more southern areas through uh, Tasmania, excluding Hobart. They're going to see the more serious rainfall accumulations throughout the remainder of today. Hobart will remain protected, but still a couple of good drops of rainfall expected through the Hobart City area as well. Limited rainfall expected through New South Wales, apart from in the southeast corner of the state along the western side of the Great Dividing Range into the foothills there, falls between 25 to 50 millimetres are a possibility over the next 36 to 48 hours. Rainfall accumulations between 5 to 15 millimetres are expected into more uh, rural parts of New South Wales as well and into the more agricultural focused zones of New South Wales. Rainfall accumulations aren't expected to be anything too serious on top of what has already fallen out there as well. The wind threat as well from this weather system, apart from those alpine locations and then again for exposed coastal locations onto the backside of the system here as we discussed in the early side of this, uh, in the early part of this forecast update, the wind threat is now pretty much eased off out of southeastern Australia and I wouldn't be surprised if severe weather warnings, apart from those issued for the Alpine locations through Victoria and New South Wales, get dropped by later today. And even then, as this low pressure system, the centre of the storm actually approaches these Alpine areas, I'm expecting a general decrease in the wind speeds across some of those higher elevations as we get towards late this evening and into early tomorrow morning. Winds should slowly begin to ease off for those locations. It definitely is an interesting weather event, that's for sure. Not only is it very powerful in terms of sheer intensity, and it's also an absolutely massive weather system, and it's going to be a while until we see another system of this sheer size and the uh, amount of places that are in, influenced by the weather that the system is bringing uh, towards Australia. Uh, it is just an absolute brute of a system. It's absolutely massive and it, it stretches across the entirety of the eastern coast and even into the north of Australia. It really is something to uh, be amazed at by the satellite imagery here. Very, very impressive to see and it's not often we see a system of this sheer size that ride this far north up and impact Australia in this way. Uh, it doesn't happen every year. In fact, it, I can't remember a time it happening in the last two or three years. This is certainly a once every five years or once a decade type storm. Uh, just in terms of area, in terms of severity and impacts, this is a storm that we see a couple of dozen times a year across southeastern Australia. And that's sometimes what people can get a little bit confused about. The size of the storm does not often correlate uh, linearly to uh, the impacts that a storm can bring. And sometimes it's the smallest storms that bring the most violent impacts. We've seen that time and time again with east coast lows over in the east coast and even uh, significant weather systems brushing up from the south across southwestern Australia. It can be those 
smaller systems that cause all of the problems. Not to mention when we're talking about tropical cyclones, small systems are often far worse than those bigger ones, but it isn't always the case. And sometimes big storms can bring all sorts of problems as well. You, ne you can never tell a storm's intensity based off exactly how big it is. There's just no way to do that accurately. You can tell a storm's intensity based off its appearance, but in terms of just sheer size, there's no uh, good metric, uh, that is no good metric for storm intensity. Just thought I'd throw that in there for you Saturday morning. Into the southwestern parts of Queensland, we had some good thunderstorms last night. Heaps of lightning blew through the southwest of the state, especially after about 9 or 10 o'clock at night. We had heaps of lightning everywhere uh, around Thugaminda, Windora, uh, Kanawala, those locations, even extending north towards Winton and Longridge. And you can see this morning a solid band of showers or a fractured uh, band of showers moving through the central parts of the state, turning to solid rainfall at times into the northeast of New South Wales. Falls between 10 to 25 millimetres expected throughout the remainder of this afternoon and into this evening through the northeast of New South Wales. Widespread falls between 5 to 15 millimetres through parts of central and even into parts of northern Queensland as well, and then falls between 25 or around that 25 millimetre mark expected later this afternoon into this evening around the southeast of Queensland. We are definitely expecting a resurgence in some convective shower and thunderstorm activity late at night after about 8 or 9 o'clock around locations such as Glendon, Moranbar, Claremont, Emerald, Dingo, and then extending north up towards Huendon and Charters Towers. This is going to be a prime spot for a few thunderstorms tonight. They will be few and far between, but we're definitely expecting the chance of some stronger ones here and there. And then again, and rainfall is going to move into the southeast of the state through uh, later tonight into very early tomorrow morning showers. It should clear by later tomorrow morning. And some solid rainfall as well also expected to move into the Wide Bay area around Rockhampton, Gladstone and Agnes Water. Like I said, falls will max out at about 25 or 30 millimetres or so. Into the southeast of the state between 10 to 25 millimetres looks to be plausible. Uh, as you get further inland, especially further north between Moranbar and up towards Charters Towers where we're looking at these thunderstorms developing later tonight. Rainfall accumulations will be very hit and miss of some locations. If you get impacted by a thunderstorm, you could be seeing 30 to 50 millimetres, but if you are in the majority and don't get impacted by thunderstorms directly, it doesn't look like we're going to be seeing any rainfall for those locations. So a couple of isolated strong cells are possible later tonight. And again, fueled by some pretty good instability in the atmosphere as well, especially for this time of the year. It's not often that we talk about instability values that even show up as a colour on this map here at this time of the year, but we're looking at some uh, relatively decent or half decent instability values here later tonight, which could definitely give way to a few thunderstorms blowing up across the central or even the northern parts of Queensland. Land. Definitely something worth keeping an eye on the radar for later this afternoon and into this evening. It was a very impressive show last night, that's for sure. I'll see if I can pull up some archive imagery of it, but late last night, very, very impressive show. And you can see some of these cells here outside of Kanamala or just outside of Kanamala, they really did pack a punch. This would be a hail cell here. And then outside of Quilpie as well, this would definitely be a hail cell as well. Definitely packing a punch, that's for sure. And considering how far away these cells are from the radar, it's a, it, it's a miracle that the radar was actually able to pick up on them. But yeah, it does go to show that these storms definitely did pack a punch and they were very strong for the month of July. These thunderstorms would have been significant enough to make the cut of a cyclone source forecast update in late November, early December, or even January, just with how strong they were. So for the, uh, the fact that they are occurring in July really does seem to be a sign of the significant storm season. We are uh, looking down the uh, barrel of it. It is a loaded gun forecast, uh, for lack of a better term, uh, this wet season especially into the early months of the wet season for Queensland and parts of New South Wales. And the fact that we're seeing storms and showers and tropical rainfall events like this, because this is definitely semi-tropical with the moisture that's being dragged down from the Indian Ocean and the Gulf of Carpentaria. The fact that we're seeing this in the middle of winter, the dead middle of winter, it really is a bit of a concern at this point in time. We're definitely looking at a very active storm season across Queensland and at New South Wales, but I won't get too far into that. There will be a detailed storm forecast coming on the first day of September this year, which is coming up very, very quickly, that is for sure. Southwestern Western Australia, another very cold morning this morning. Multiple temperature uh, observations through the southwest dipped below minus one or minus two degrees. Lake Grace out here, or Newdigate out here at minus two degrees. Minus two at Wandering, one of the coldest spots in the state, and also minus two at Collie. Uh, they're pretty much used to that though. And again, a very cold temperature, uh, very cold temperatures through the Perth metro area. Minus one uh, outside of the airport, zero at Janicott, and zero at Rolleston. So very cold indeed. And again, it's expected to be a cold day again uh, throughout the remainder of today. This weekend will be fine, at least starting off fine. We are expecting a bit of a return for the worst in terms of the weather forecast from tomorrow, or from tonight actually into early tomorrow morning. Showers will begin to return and build across the southwest capes through later tonight into very early tomorrow morning. Arriving into the Perth metro area in a bit of a uh, prefrontal band coming through, which is going to include a few weak showers, a few speckled showers that are going to be very weak in nature through later tomorrow morning and into very early tomorrow afternoon before the real deal, the strong showers and the heavy rainfall pipes up after about midday uh, for the Perth metro area. Plenty of showers and storms 
expected to follow in from this front here through Sunday night into early Monday morning. Showers and rainfall clearing through later Monday morning after the sun rises. Showers will continue and some very cold temperatures could give way to some snowfall accumulations here and there across the Stirling Ranges through early Monday morning and showers continuing through Monday afternoon across the south coast as well. In fact, we're expecting some heavy rainfall through Monday night into Tuesday morning as this low pressure system rides high again into the Great Australian Bight around the Bremer Bay and Esperance area. Some really good rainfall is possible in this general pocket of southwest and western Australia. I'm talking falls between 30 to 60 millimetres coming through Monday night into Tuesday morning. So this is your heads up for these locations here. For the most part, Albany and then locations further west of Albany shouldn't be impacted whatsoever from that weather system. But yeah, definitely some interesting stuff, that's for sure. We're definitely staring down at the barrel of some significant rainfall again. It's not going to be as significant as the rainfall that came through in the previous weather system. That uh, When did that go through? Mid this week, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. But we're definitely looking at the same nature of rainfall coming through. Slow moving, heavy showers that are very large in nature moving through into the Perth metro area. They're going to provide some healthy rainfall accumulations here and there. Again, with that great, uh, the great Australian bite, with the Lewin current running very warm at this time, especially for this time of the year, we're looking at elevated moisture content being uh, held within the atmosphere, and that's going to lead to some higher rainfall accumulations, especially for coastal locations. But a very similar frontal setup to what we were looking at in uh, the middle of uh, this week just gone. Rainfall isn't expected to make it out into the wheat belt, unfortunately, in any significant capacity, and only a few drops of rainfall expected out there, uh, between one to five millimetres expected through much of the wheat belt, and even less as you get out into the Murchison or the, gas, uh, the Goldfields regions, nothing expected expected up into the Gascoigne or into the Pilbara regions either. But yeah, falls between 10 to 25 millimetres forecast around the Perth metro area. They could increase up to about 50 millimetres along the coastal areas and again up to about 50 millimetres into the Perth hills. Falls could be as high as 75 millimetres around the southwest capes, uh, Cape Naturalist and Augusta and rainfall accumulations between 25 to 50 millimetres are possible at any point along the coastline as far north as Geraldton. Rainfall accumulations will drop off significantly as you get further north of about Northampton. Rainfall accumulations are also expected to be quite healthy on the south coast as well between 10 to 25 millimetres expected towards the east of Augusta and then increasing between 25 to 60 millimetres between Albany across towards Esperance and then out towards Israelite Bay. Like I said, rainfall unfortunately not making it out into the weed belt. That is going to do it though for your Sunday, uh, Sunday, I'm getting ahead of myself, thank goodness it's not Sunday, I wouldn't want one day of the weekend, but that is going to do it for this morning, Saturday morning forecast update nationwide, I do hope it's answered all of your questions weather-wise, apart from that, looking clear across the interior parts, cold and clear across into the Northern Territory and Western Australia in the wake of that weather system, and it is going to get cold again over into the southeast, especially in the wake of this weather system, so Monday and Tuesday, rug up across Queensland, New South Wales, Victoria, South Australia, the Capital Territory, and Tasmania as well, it is going to get very cold overnight and during the day for those areas. I do hope you found this video informative and enjoyable and preferably both. And if you have, then please consider like, leaving a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. A special shout out to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now. And again, if you want to get your name mentioned at this part of the forecast update, click the join button down below. It is the best way to financially support the Cyclones Oz channel. That is going to do it for today. I'll catch you on the next storm. Goodbye.